السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم ارحمنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين ما شاء الله today إن شاء الله we will be starting a new series uh, that uh, in which we will be uh, bringing into focus the biographies of the gen the first generation of Muslim women and the important role they played in the overall development of their society right from the very beginning. But before we start, let's have uh, a quick look at women uh, in the pre-Islamic period. At that time, women were in a very lowly st status in Arabia. So an Arab man would look at women as a source of shame and humiliation. If a father was given the news uh, of the birth of a girl, then he would be extremely distressed, wondering whether he should have the humble option of keeping this baby or the other option of burying her alive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in Surah An-Nahl in Ayah 50, 58. He says, أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كظيم. And when one of them is informed of the birth of a female, his face becomes dark and he, su he suppresses grief. So the birth of a girl was actually something humiliating at that time. يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ أَيُمْسِكُهُ عَلَى هُونٍ أَمْ يَدُسُّهُ فِي التُّرَابِ أَلَا سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ So he hides himself from the people because of the bad news that he, ha he got. He had a baby girl. So what, what, what are his options? Should he, keep, should he keep this baby in humiliation or should he bury, bury it in the ground? Unquestionably. Evil is what they decide. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about uh, a father having uh, the, the news of getting a baby girl. But when the Prophet وسلم, received the message, there was a change. There was a change of how to look at women. So women became prominent figures. And we see Khadija radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, the wife of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the first person to believe in Islam, to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the first person to, to uh, comfort Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to assure him that what he has received is nothing but uh, the, the angel. It's the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subayya bintu Khayyat. And this is Amir, uh, Amir's mom. Uh, this is Ammar's Miyasir mom. So she was the first murder in Islamic history. So... Uh, other women, Muslim, Muslim women, accompanied the Muslim men on their immigration to Abyssinia. So Muslim women became prominent figures. So the women 
Now, if we ask, who is the woman? Who, what, what is the role of a woman? The woman is the person who raises a generation. She is the one who takes care of the family. A family without a mom is not. You feel there is something wrong. No one can take the role, the position, the, the duties of a mom. So should she know how uh, two uh, important roles? So, so these are the important roles of the mom. She raises a generation and she takes care of the family. So should she know how to do these two important roles, then society will be prosperous with great Muslims, Muslim men and women. So we have to understand the role of the woman in society. And at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we 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 saw how many young how many young uh, young uh, men how how they um, love to sacrifice their lives for for Islam for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let's. Uh, Usama radiallahu an, Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu an, was nicknamed as Al-Hibb ibn Al-Hibb. He led the army when he was 17 years old. So who is that woman who raised this child to be a leader to the army of the Muslims at the age of 17? So compare that amazing fighter, that amazing commander, that amazing leader who was 17 years old, compare him to a 17 years old of our age. He was a leader. What are our 17 years old doing here? Are they leaders? If they are, then we have to, to thank the mom who is raising this child. So, as moms, we have to know how to do that. We have to know how to raise this great person to be a leader. We have to, ra to raise young men like Usama, like this leader. So we see so many women in our age, in our time, they, they know the responsibility. They know that what they have to do. And they start to take care of their family. And they started at, the, at very uh, early ages. Since their baby, they, are, they, they were babies. They would, they would make them listen to the Quran, to the recitation of the Quran. They would make them recite the Quran when they get a little older. Later, they would make them memorize the Quran. So these children are raised with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are raised to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are raised to the love of the Quran. So with this love, they will be protected in their life. Life is not easy. It's a test. And this test starts from the when, when they are just children. And the test at that time is for the parents. It's not for the child. 
if you are raising good Muslims, then they will be able to stand and uh, to, they will be shielded from the many arrows that are aimed at them. Look at our society. Look at the challenges that this new generation is facing. We have to get them ready to face these challenges. We have to prepare them to, to be strong Muslims so they, they are not affected by any of the currents around them. It's just a challenge. Sometimes you hear from a mom that she's complaining. She has a 17 years old son who is not praying. And when she asks for advice, what should I do? What, what, where were you when he was young? You must have left some of your responsibilities when they were young so you are not able now to control them when they are old. When, when you raise them properly, they will be ready to accept your advices when you give these advices. And it's always the, the mom uh, always So the, the mom should always take care, the mom should always take care. I think there is uh, a difficulty. I hope everything is okay. Okay, so the mom should, should take care of the uh, children of how she is raising her children. So when, when, she, when she takes care of them, when she takes care of them, then she knows that uh, they are well taken care of. Now, she pays attention for their, for their life. She pays attention for, for their needs. But what happens? What happens after that? She doesn't stop here because she cares about their akhirah also. She doesn't care about their dunya only. She loves her children. She wants them to be saved on the day after. And that's why she does her best in this dunya. She wants them to be happy in both lives. Not only in this dunya. She would, she would get them all their needs and she will support them with everything she, they, they, they want. No, that's not it. She, ha she takes care of their akhirah. She takes care of them. She wants them to be in high maqams of the akhirah. And that's why she, takes, she, she does her best in this dunya. So we as moms, we want to, we, we want to raise uh, children who will be cool in cool, coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And particularly, we want to, we, we want to focus, we want to focus on the, uh, uh, we want to focus on raising good moms. When the girls are young, then everything will be easier if taken care from the very beginning. So we want to raise 
daughters who will be great moms in the future. And the, the most important thing is that the, 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 the daughter will be a mom. She will take care of her children. And there is a line of poetry. It says, الأم مدرسة إذا أعددتها أعددت شعبا طيب الأعراق A mom is a complete school. She's a school. If you know how to raise a mom, how to, to make her a good mom, then be sure that you saved a whole society. And you will be raising good generations. So we have, the mom has to be the first thing, she has to be a model. She has to be a model. You cannot, as a mom, tell your children, do this and do that, and you yourself do not do it. Or you yourself do it. You cannot. You have to be a good model. They are copying you. They are understanding you. They are looking at you as their model. So we have to raise them to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at the hearts of people. And he chose Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the prophet. He chose the best of the hearts to be our prophet. And he chose the best of the people around him to be his companions. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ashabi kan nujum bi'ayyihum muhtadaytum muqtadaytum. So my companions are like stars. Whoever you follow, you will be guided. They are the best generation. So they, the companions, uh, bring for us, they related for us the outer life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there was a need to know how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is living inside his houses. So that was one of the important roles for his wives and his daughters. And uh, so they would tell us how he would, how he would feel, how he would uh, act how he would do everything so his inner life his inner life was conveyed to us through women around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Aisha radiallahu anha was raised in the house of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and she was she was well protected and when she was just uh, very young, she got married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there was no uh, uh, effect from the outer uh, society uh, to her. So she was so pure. She was an, an amazing person to convey to us our religion. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Take half of your religion from this uh, red head uh, uh, woman. This is the woman around Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has chosen and his choice was the best. And we know that there are there, uh, different types of women around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Some of them were women who were given the glad tidings of Jannah, that they will be in, uh, in, in paradise. And I can list at least 20 of them. Those are the, the ladies, the, the women who, who were given the glad tidings that they will be in paradise. Umm al-Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, Khadija bint Quwaylid, radiyallahu anha. Fatima bint Asad. Umm Haram bint Milhan. Nasiba bint Ka'b. Umm Ruman. Baraka. Al-Rabiya bint Mu'awwid. Sumayya bin Khubbad. Kabsha bint Rafi'. Umm al-Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, Zainab bint Jahsh. Aisha bint Abi Bakr. Fatima bintu Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad. Al-Furayah bintu Malik. Ummu al-Munzir. Asma Ummu Sulaym. Ummu Waraqa. Asma bintu Yazid. Ummu Hisham. And the mother of the believer, Hafsa bintu Umar radiyallahu anha. So they, this is the first group of women around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were the, uh, those who were given the glad tidings of paradise. There were women around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were teachers. Other women were uh, physicians. Like Rufayda al-Aslamiya radiyallahu anha. She started a surgery in a tent when she, she, looked, she was looking after those who were injured in the battle. So women... Other women were fighters. Other women just went with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in military expeditions. Some of them tended the injured fighters. Some of them provided soldiers with water and drink. One, one of the uh, an example of the heroines um, uh, of the battle of Uhud was Umm Ayman radiallahu anha. She saw one of the uh, uh, non-believers aiming an arrow at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she jumped to shield Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was hit in the shoulder. This is the true love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how we want to raise our children to be lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Asma bint Yazid killed nine Byzantine soldiers in the battle of Al-Yarmouk using the pole of her tent. So we have women around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, companions around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They had different uh, characteristics. They had different um, uh, characters. They had different roles in, in society. Today, inshallah, we will uh, talk about one of uh, the... Uh, Muslim Sahabis, Sahabiyat, one of the uh, uh, Muslim women who were with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And her name, her name is Fatima bint Asad. So who is, who is this amazing? Companion of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who is this amazing female companion? Fatima bint Asad radiyallahu anha was born into a household that was the center of spirituality. Her grandfather, uh, Hashim, Hashim bin Abdul Manaf was the leader of Quraysh and the keeper of the Kaaba. Very, very honorable family, Mashallah. And he was a capable and a generous man. He was the leader of, of, his, uh, of his group. 
So he married a girl from his own family. And this, this woman, she gave, she gave birth to his son, Asad. And Asad is the father of Fatima. Okay, so Fatima been to Asad. And Asad is the son of Hashim bin Abdi Manaf. So the members of the Hashimi family were well known in the tribe of Quraysh. They were well known for their moral virtues and uh, high humanistic characteristics among, uh, among the Arab tribes. They were known to be very noble, generous, courageous. So very well-known family. Fatima bint Asad was a remarkable Hashimi lady who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was, she was so kind, loving, and caring. And she herself had, uh, she had four sons, and they were Talib, Aqil, Jafar, and Ali radiallahu anhu. And she had also two daughters, Um Hani and Jumana. And above all, she had Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was her adopted son. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost his mother, we all know, early, very early in life when he was six years old. His grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, brought him to his home and he took very good care of him. So he lived with his grandfather. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived with his grandfather about two years. But when he was eight, his grandfather died. And that was, that day was a day of grief in Mecca. So the leader of the, uh, uh, of the tribe, say Abdul Muttalib, passed away. No one felt the pain such as Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His mom passed away two years ago. And now his grandfather dies in front of him. And Um Ayman, his nanny, used to say, Ra'aytu Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawma idin yabki khalf sariri abdil muttalib. I saw the messenger of Allah he was a child at that day. I saw him crying behind the, the bed of Abdul Muttalib. He, he felt that he, he, he is an orphan again. He felt that. He felt that there is, there is the, the big heart who used to take care of him is no, is no longer there. He knew that. So after Abdul Muttalib, his uncle, his uncle Abu Talib, took care of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Abu Talib, Abdul Muttalib was poor and he had so many children. But he loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he saw a lot of blessings that happened to him and to his family when his, uh, uh, his nephew came to live with him. So, when, for example, if they have, if, they, if mom prepared the food and they want to they wanna eat, if the children, if his children started to eat, there will be, the food will not be enough for, for the family. But he noticed that if 
Muhammad, the young, the young boy, if he started with, with, with the food, if he started to eat the, from the food, he was the first to eat from the food, he, there would be blessing. There would be barakah. The food would be enough for everybody. So he noticed that this, there is something special about his nephew. And his wife, his wife, Fatima bin to Asad, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose her to, to raise Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now this amazing woman raised the child who will be the prophet. She was, as, as I just mentioned, the mother of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the love of um, uh, this uh, orphan boy, Muhammad alayhi salam, put his love into the heart of Fatima radiallahu anha. So she was taking care of him way more than what she used to take care of her children. So he was, mashallah, a very uh, attractive boy. He was very polite. He was very handsome. He was very uh, kind. And Fatima radiallahu anha uh, loved him. And she took amazing care of him. And he stayed with her around uh, 20, 20 years, two decades. So he soon found a second mom in Fatima bin Asad. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not miss the love and affection that a mother alone can give. Fatima looked after him. She looked after him in his boyhood and in his youth. She, she he, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, she made me her son. And she always made sure that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the best of everything. So we can say that if her husband protected Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his enemies outside, Fatima provided him love, comfort, and security at home. So he was well taken care of. Both of them took very good care of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, the point of mentioning the stories and the biographies of the women around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to take lessons of their lives, of their uh, attitudes, of, of what they did. Now, the main thing that Fatima did was she took care of an orphan. And there will be a lot of rewards for taking care of the orphan and looking after him. So, subhanAllah, you will be, so what are, what are these rewards? How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward the, someone who takes care of an orphan? The first thing is, this person will be close to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. And he, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one of the narrations, the one who cares for an orphan and myself will be together in paradise like this. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held his two fingers together to illustrate. So he had his both fingers close to each other. And this is how the one who takes care of an orphan, this, this is how he will be at the day of judgment in paradise with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another reward 
the uh, the house where this orphan is being raised will be described as the best house. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said the best house among the Muslim is the house in which orphans are well treated. And the worst house among the Muslims is the house in which orphans are ill treated. So sometimes someone is married to a husband who has children. Their mom dies. They are orphans. The more she cares for them, the better the, the, the higher the reward for her will be on the day of judgment. Their house will be described as the best house. And also another reward is that this person will be among the righteous person. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, so righteousness or true righteousness is in one who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the last day, the angels, the book, and the prophets, and gives wealth. So he spends money for the sake of Allah. And how he does that in spite of his love for this wealth. So who does he spend? He spends, he gives it to relatives, to orphans, to the needy. So this person will be considered of the righteous people. And this is our example, Fatima bintu Asad. And this is an important lesson for everyone. We have to keep in mind to be good to the orphans. Even if we are not raising them, but if we know that there is an orphan, we have to, to, to be kind to that person. We have to be kind to this child. So this message was uh, presented in Surah Al-Insan in Ayah 8. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَثِيرًا So Fatima radiallahu anha was a great example of this ayah, which says, and they give food in spite of the love for it, to the needy, to the orphans, and to the captives. And what is in return? إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا So we feed you only for the sake of Allah. We wish not from you reward or gratitude. And this is another lesson for us. Do not ever do anything, anything, and expect a thank you or expect a praise for what you did. Why? When we, when we do something, we do it for the sake of Allah. We know that we will be rewarded in the day after. So we don't seek any of these words in uh, thank you thank you notes or thank you words in 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 this dunya khair if it is said it's good but if it's not said then remember that you already did it purely for the sake of Allah who's going to give you your reward in the day after so don't have any expectations from people you know why if you wait for them to say or uh, to do something or to say something and they did not, you, you will be upset. And we want to, to have a clean and a clear heart towards everyone. When we want, when, uh, we want to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
with a قلب سليم. قلب سليم a sound heart. يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم. So, on the day of judgment, when wealth or children will not benefit anyone, no matter how wealthy you are in this dunya, and no matter how many children you have in this dunya, nothing will be helpful. The winner, the winner on the day after, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ is the one who comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. So, years passed now. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed about 20 years of his life with uh, Fatima radiallahu anha. And she was the closest of people to him. She took care she took very good care of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After that, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets married to uh, Khadija radiallahu anha. So Khadija will be his wife. So he moved to, from the house of Fatima bin to Asad radiallahu anha. But he was very good person to uh, to Fatima radiallahu anha, to, to the uh, wife of his uncle. He wouldn't forget her. He wouldn't forget how, uh, how good she was to him. And he used to say, إِنَّهَا كَانَتْ أَحْسَنُ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ إِلَيَّ صَنِيعًا بَعْدَ أَبِي طالب. She used to be the best of Allah's creatures to me after my uncle. So, uh, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was revealed to, Fatima bint Asad radiallahu anha was of the very pioneers to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, blessed them with the uh, with all her children to become Muslims also. So later on, her son Ali radiallahu anha, uh, anhu married Fatima bin to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was the best mother-in-law. Okay, another message. Be good to your, to your mother-in-law. To be good to your daughter-in-law. Be good to your son-in-law. We want to raise a healthy society. When, when this society is built on love, then it will be a strong society. All will be one family. Every, all, all the family will be united. So Fatima radiallahu anha was a very good mother-in-law. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to take, to, to, to respect her a lot. And he used to always to check on her and to send her gifts. So time passes and it was her death. SubhanAllah. Anas ibn Malik عنه, says, when the Prophet وسلم, got the news of the death of Fatima bin to Asad, عنها, he immediately went to her house and sat beside her and prayed for her. He cried. He gave his shirt to be used as part of her shroud. And the Prophet وسلم, himself entered the grave and he lay there for a while. Then he came out and there were tears coming from his eyes. So the tears fell onto the grave. 
this attitude of the Prophet وسلم, represented his closeness to her. So it was, it was also a compliment to her for the grave that the Prophet وسلم, his body, his blessed body touched the, the, this grave, touched the grave. So it became a blessed grave. The companions asked Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, about his attitude toward her. And he said, and they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, we have not seen you taking care of anybody the same way that you did. So you gave her your uh, shirt, you, uh, you, you, you lay down in the grave, you are shedding tears. So what is it? And the Prophet وسلم, said you, just, just a few words that were so heart touching. He said, كانت أمي بعد أمي. She was my mother after my mother. She fed me before, before her own children. And she fed me and she herself was hungry. She combed my hair and put rose oil on me first uh, and her, her own children were still dirty. They were dusty. She was my mother. I have not met anybody who took care of me more than her after my uncle Abu Talib. And I put my own garment on her so that she will be clothed in garments of paradise. And I lay down in her grave for a while so that life in the grave will be easy for her. This was the lady with the big heart. This big heart loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, in turn, loved her and respected her so much. So this is our first example of the companions, the women companions about, uh, around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these, these, these examples are our model that we want to raise our children to be like them. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children and to raise them with, with his care. So they will be coolness of an eye to him, coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So inshallah, until we meet next time, I send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, we'll meet next week with another uh, uh, woman who was around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we might cover more than one. So depending on time, inshallah. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.